Before we start the video, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more company documentary videos. Please support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing the video. We're working aggressively to grow the channel and we need your help by subscribing. Your support means so much and is so appreciated. Thanks again. The Cheesecake Factory is an American restaurant company and distributor of cheesecakes based in the United States. It operates 206 restaurants under the Cheesecake Factory brand and 13 under the Grand Lux Cafe brand. The Cheesecake Factory also operates two bakery production facilities in Calabasas, California and Rocky Mount, North Carolina and licenses two bakery-based menus for other food service operators under the Cheesecake Factory Bakery Cafe marquee. Its cheesecakes and other baked goods can also be found in the cafes of many Barnes & Noble stores. This is the success story of the Cheesecake Factory. Evelyn Overton opened a business after making a cheesecake for her husband's employer in 1949. She opened a small cheesecake bakery in Detroit, Michigan in the late 1950s, but eventually gave it up in order to raise her two children. She continued to supply cakes to several local restaurants through a kitchen in her basement. In 1967, Evelyn's son David M. Overton left Detroit to attend Hastings College of Law in San Francisco, but in 1968 decided to be a drummer, performing with the Billy Roberts Blues Band. In 1971, David convinced his parents to relocate to Los Angeles to open a commercial bakery. In 1972, they moved to the Woodland Hills area of Los Angeles where they opened the Cheesecake Factory Bakery, in which they produced cheesecakes and other desserts for local restaurants. In 1978, Evelyn's son David opened the Cheesecake Factory, a small salad and sandwich restaurant in Beverly Hills that sold 10 variety of cheesecakes on a one-page menu. In 1983, he opened a second restaurant in Marina del Rey. By 1987, the Beverly Hills location had expanded into a 78-seat restaurant and was experiencing great financial success. This led to the opening of a third, larger location in Redondo Beach, which was eventually renovated into a 300-seat, 21,000-square-foot location. By the end of the 1980s, the Cheesecake Factory's one-page menu had expanded, and the restaurant offered additional fast food and short-order items. Even though the Cheesecake Factory is a pretty common chain restaurant, that doesn't mean it's the most casual chain restaurant out there. Sure, you don't need to dress up all fancy to eat there, but it's definitely a lot nicer than your average Chili's, that's for sure. And that's kind of the point. According to founder David Overton, the Cheesecake Factory wants to be a little nicer than your typical chain restaurant. He states, We coined the phrase upscale casual dining, he told Vice. He also said, With the type of food we serve, the money we put into the decor, it becomes upscale casual dining, where, for the most part, if you had more money, you would come to Cheesecake. Obviously, a Cheesecake Factory isn't the nicest restaurant in town, and you don't need to be super rich to eat there. But it is more expensive and a little fancier than a lot of other places. So don't be shocked if you've never been and you get your first bill, because it's not cheap, that's for sure. Anyway, the 1990s saw the opening of the first Cheesecake Factory restaurant outside of Southern California. The new restaurant was located in Washington, D.C. The Cheesecake Factory was incorporated in 1992 and went public in September 1993. David Overton planned to open three to four units a year in the hopes of generating 25% a year increase in sales. The company began changing its menu twice a year and added items including steaks, seafood, and vegetarian dishes. The company continued to open new restaurants and, by 1995, was ranked 11th in the United States. As of April 2013, the Cheesecake Factory operated 162 restaurants under the Cheesecake Factory name in 36 states. In Plaza Las Americas in San Juan, Puerto Rico, they opened its first Cheesecake Factory on August 28, 2013. The Cheesecake Factory has also expanded into international markets by both licensing agreements for other companies to operate franchises and by corporate ownership. On January 25, 2011, the company expanded into the Middle East in a partnership with Kuwaiti retail franchising company MH Al Shea Co. The 300-seat restaurant opened on August 16, 2012 at the Dubai Mall. This is the Cheesecake Factory's first location outside the United States. In May 2014, the Cheesecake Factory announced that they would open the first Cheesecake Factory in East Asia. 
the first East Asian Cheesecake Factory opened in Disney Town in Pudong, Shanghai, China on June 16, 2016. Also in 2014, the first Cheesecake Factory in Mexico opened its doors in Guadalajara. As of May 2018, the Cheesecake Factory has 11 restaurants in the Middle East, four in Dubai, which was the 160th Cheesecake Factory opening, two in Saudi Arabia, and three others. On December 1, 2015, the Cheesecake Factory opened its eighth Middle East branch at the Verdun Shopping Center in Beirut, Lebanon. The opening was attended by many of the Cheesecake Factory management, including managers from the U.S. and Dubai. The Cheesecake Factory also made its first appearance in Doha, Qatar, by opening in the Mall of Qatar, and further opened two more branches in Villaggio and Doha Festival City. On April 12, 2017, the company announced that it would be expanding into Canada. In November 2017, the first Canadian location opened at Yorkdale Shopping Center in Toronto, Ontario. As of the end of 2021, the Cheesecake Factory is open for business in UAE, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, Mexico, the Chinese mainland, and special administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau. With such success, an expansion in the Cheesecake Factory chain generated approximately 3.3 billion US dollars in revenue worldwide in 2022. This reflects an increase of around 12% over the previous year. Even with such success, the Cheesecake Factory still had to navigate some challenges during and after the pandemic, which they're still trying to recover from. The Cheesecake Factory posted lower than expected earnings during the Q4 2022 earnings call. The analyst summarized the reasons for the low earnings were due to consumers continuing to feel the sting of inflation. Same store sales for the quarter increased by 4%. However, they failed to meet market expectations in many other areas, which negatively impacted their bottom line. The company revenue was $892.8 million versus $901.86 million, which is what they expected. Chairman and CEO David Overton called the fourth quarter's performance overall a solid finish to a challenging year marked by persistent inflation, volatility, and a dynamic operating environment. He added, We believe the strong consumer demand we experienced at our new restaurant openings and continued positive sales trends following our pricing actions demonstrate the strength and resilience of our concepts. Prior to the pandemic, the company saw sales at the Cheesecake Factory restaurants increased by 11.4%. So far in the first quarter of 2023, same-store sales are up nearly 9.5% year-over-year and 17% compared to 2019. The CEO detractors like Citibank downgraded shares of the Cheesecake Factory from a buy to neutral rating. In a note to investors, analyst John Tower said that inflation and no incremental plans to tackle these higher costs make it hard to gauge how the casual chain plans to grow its bottom line. However, year-to-date shares are up 25.4% despite multiple downgrades from Wall Street analysts. Honestly, I like Cheesecake Factory. Their food is decent for the most part, and I've received good customer service every time I've went. However, based on how the CEO is speaking, it does not appear to me they have a solid plan to navigate this inflation storm. It kind of seems like they just want it to go away. They're still trying to charge pre-pandemic prices for food that should have never been priced that high to begin with. Inflation is really kicking people's financial behind, so being overpriced for basic food doesn't seem like a good business model to me. Between food cost, utility cost, staff cost, etc., they have to bring in a pretty penny per month to maintain their business. It appears to me that they like charging high prices. I think it makes them feel more elite especially after that comment that the CEO made. Overall, I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. But if they do not get their pricing structure together, I believe they'll be in real trouble in the next three to five years. Anyway, do you like Cheesecake Factory? Do you like their food? Have any of you worked for them? If yes, how is your experience working for them or eating there? Please let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more company documentary videos. And be sure to like and share the video as well. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.